Let's talk Dark Souls. It's a 3D action RPG. It's a very good game. Uh, it has a very good weighty combat. It's very immersive and it has a soundtrack to back all that up. Uh, a common thing you'll hear about the game is that it's hard but fair. Personally, I don't think it's either. Um, in terms of hardness, all you really gotta do to beat enemies is circle strafe around them until you find their openings and stab them in the butt. For big enemies, you run into their crotch. Usually what they'll do is jump up in the air. When they do, back up. When they fall, hit them in the crotch again. Uh, as far as fair goes, I feel like people forgot about the first time they encountered Seath, or the first time a dragon flew over them and just blew fire on them for half their life, or the first time they fell into a pitfall into the mouths of googly-eyed monsters who mou whose mouths are their heads. Uh, I don't know when people... St why people started thinking this game was fair, it isn't, and we like it for not being fair. Anyway, uh, an another thing to think of is that even though people say it's hard, there's other things you can do, is you can just summon people, uh, you don't gotta worry about the get-gooders, you will call you a noob from summoning other people, it's in the game, do it, or use pyromancy and just cheese all the bosses, cause you know, why not? Um, Something I've always felt is that the first half of the game is vastly superior to the second half of the game. Uh, the first half of the game running up until uh, you beat Ornstein and Smoke, which is a little bs in its own right, but feels, you know, fair up until that point. Uh, after you be after that, every place is uh, just just a field of gimmicks. You know, going from the Undead Bear down Orlando, it's sweet level design, the placement of the passages, the... Uh, secret passages to get back to everywhere is great. You can get back to your hub world or to your blacksmith really easy. Uh, the, the difficulty seems to be scaling in a cool way. And then you get to the second part of the game, which is gimmick after gimmick. You go to the catacombs. You gotta fight annoying skeletons in a godforsaken maze in the dark where you find out that the best way to figure it, to get through the maze is just to jump off a cliff, ignore some skeletons on wheels, and just run to the boss. Uh, who's actually not even that hard, he just has more annoying skeletons, which obviously he could stay dead if you figure out divine weapons, but Dark Souls is a vague game. Why would you have figured out divine weapons? Screw that place. New Londo, even worse. Now you gotta deal with ghosts. There's another type of weapon that can deal with ghosts. You would never know that. Uh, the only fair thing about New Londo is at least the ghosts drop enough transient curses so you can keep murdering them. The unfair thing about the ghosts is everything else. They can go through walls, they can attack you through walls, and you can not attack shit through walls. And this is all so you can have a terrible fight in the Four Kings. Next we got, uh, what, Lies Lost Isolith? Clearly just an unfinished section of the game. There's like two types of enemies in it, and a pretty much the dumbest boss fight. It's super easy, and it relies on your jump mechanic in Dark Souls 1. And if you've played, jumped in Dark Souls 1, you know it's not worth doing. Uh, and then, uh, what's left? Um, Seath's Castle? Uh, Seath's Biblioteca? That actually starts off alright, but then right away you end up in a battle with Seath, who's just an automatic loss. You have actually no way of winning this fight. You can just lose all your souls. And then the area culminates into invisible paths, butterflies, and crystals? Crystal monsters? Eh, it's, it, it's kind of a bullshit. Um, the last fight with Gwyn's pretty dope. Uh, you raffle stomp him, he's the easiest boss to parry, but it feels like you've earned the right to wreck him at that point, so that's pretty dope. Like I said, good game overall, probably a 7 on 10 really, but if you're a fanboy who just, you know, can't bear to think that there might be something wrong with a game he likes, it's a definite 10 on 10, maybe even a 15 on 10, would recommend.